whole unit. Exponential, okay? When we are talking about exponential functions, exponential functions are functions that are of this form right there. F of x equals a times b to the x. Um, some requirements, a is non-zero, so a can be anything but zero. B must be positive, and B cannot equal 1. Okay, so in this form, we're talking exponential functions. Um, when we talk about this, A is what we call the initial value. So basically, when X equals 0, what will A be? That will be your initial value, and B is your base. Okay? Um, with all of these, we're looking at their exponential functions. X is the exponent, okay? So, one basic thing we're gonna do, determine whether each of the following, determine whether each of the following are exponential functions. For those that are, I wanna know the initial value in the base. For those that are not, tell me why not. Okay, so A, F of X equals three to the X. Exponential? or not exponential? If it is, what's the initial value in the base? If it's not, why not? The question is not about B, the question is about A. Uh, so oh, because it, uh, there's no A, so it is. Okay, so three goes with the X, right? So that automatically by default makes three your B value. The question is, is there an A? How do, is there, is there not an A? What's an invisible number I can put out there? One. Could I rewrite this as one times three to the X? If I say one times three to the X, is that equivalent? Yeah. It is, isn't it? Okay, so with that in mind, is this exponential? Yeah. This is exponential. If it is exponential, IV, what's your initial value? One. Okay, initial value is your A value, which is the one, the piece not with the exponent. And I'm just gonna use B, what's my base? Three, the piece with the X in the exponent. Wait, why IV? Initial value. Can we just put A? Sure. As long as you know what's what. Make sense? Yes. Yes, A is initial value. So if you put A equals, I'll put on there. Okay, B. G of X equals 6X to the negative fourth. Thoughts? X If so, what are your initial value and base? Where's X supposed to be? If this is an exponential function, where where is X supposed to be? In the exponent. Is it in the exponent? It has to be in the exponent. That is definition of exponent, exponential. So if X is in the exponent, then we can talk possibility of exponential. Since X is not in the exponent, this one is not exponential. Why is it not exponential? I would say X is not the exponent. If you want to go back to last chapter, when the exponent is negative four, we could call this a power function. I know, this test was before Thanksgiving break. We've slept a lot since then, or I hope we've slept a lot since then. So that terminology is already gone, but it is a power function. 
Okay, C, H of X equals negative 2 times 1.5 to the power of X. Is it exponential? Yes. Okay, if so, what's my initial value? Negative 2. Whatever's in the A position, right? So initial value, negative 2. What's my base? 1.5. Whatever is the base of the exponent X. Should I start with that one, maybe? Maybe that was the easy one. Okay. Now, what is tricky about that one? Decimals. Are decimals okay? Yeah. Yeah, we can talk decimals. We can talk fractions. So. And the initial value can be negative. Yep. Okay. D. K of X equals 7 times 2 to the negative X. Our original form doesn't call for negative x, does it? Could this be readjusted a little bit, maybe? Okay. So what I would suggest you do here, and I don't know, do I have time, room to write this here? Think about this 2 as 2 to the negative 1 raised to the x. Is that still equivalent? Because 2 to the negative 1 raised the x, power to power we multiply, and negative 1 times x is still negative x, yes? So look inside those parentheses. What do you know about 2 to the negative 1? It's not negative 2. Why is it 1 half? The negative exponent takes it to the denominator. So this could be rewritten as... 1 over 2 to the first raised to the x, which is 1 half, yes? Okay. My restriction on b is that b must be positive, and it can't be 1. I've met those criteria, haven't I? Okay. In order to be able to, I could tell you by looking negative x, yeah, it's still exponential, but when I go to identify my a and b, I have to adjust a little bit before I identify my a and b. So, I'm going to say exponential. What's our initial value? Or in other words, our A is 7. What's my base? 1 half. Or 0.5 if you prefer. Or I guess 2 to the negative first. Okay, E. Q of X, 5 times 6 to the pi. What are you thinking? No. Why not? Because pi. Because pi? Where's X? Where do we see? Gone. Okay. This graph is a horizontal line, folks, because 5 is a constant, 6 is a constant, pi is a constant. This is all a bunch of constants multiplied together. Okay? This is no fancy function. It looks fancy, but it's not. If you do 5 times 6 to the pi in your calculator, you're going to get some value. Okay? And so this is not exponential. You could use the same answer I used earlier. X is not in the exponent, right? The pi and 7x, or you can use the answer of there is no x, there is no variable. Okay, so either of those would work in my opinion. So x is not the exponent, or there is no x. Actually, I should say there is no variable. Either way, it can't be exponential. Okay. You got some ideas there? They're going to try and trick you, right? They're going to give you the tricky things like what I've done. 
So you got an idea of what we're looking at for exponential now, right? Emma, did you just do 5 times 6 to the pi? What'd you get? Oh, I did. Oh, you did. Okay. I thought you said yeah. Okay, that's example one. Oh, she's working on example two. Yes. Okay, now, example two. I'm going to tell you, I want to do this somewhat without calculators. Okay, in other words, I'm not saying we can't use the calculators to figure out some of the values, but I want us to pause and think about how we do this mathematically before we get to the calculator, if that makes any sense. Okay? And part of the reason I say that is the directions here do say find the exact value. Okay? You can't give me a decimal answer here. And most of them wouldn't be decimal answers to begin with, but I, don't, I can't take a big, long, messy decimal because I need exact. So exact is could be a terminating decimal. A decimal has an end, but exact is more the full number answers or the fraction answers, maybe. Now, f of 4. What does f of 4 mean? Anywhere you see x. Okay. Any place we see x, we're replacing it with 4. So in this case, it's going to be 2 to the 4. Yes? And what's 2 to the 4th mean? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And this is where I'm not saying you can't use the calculators to do the math. I'm just saying know how to do this. 2 to the 4th is 16. So f of 4 is 16. Okay. Try this next one without the calculator. Okay, so what does f of 0 mean? means we're doing what? 2 to the 0. Anything raised to the power of 0 is 1. Does the calculator confirm that? It does. Now, this is one where I don't want you jumping at the calculator because our brains have to go back and process how do we do f of negative 3. So you know 2 to the negative 3rd. If you plug 2 to the negative 3rd in your calculator right now, it's going to give you a nice little decimal. And it would give you, that decimal is an exact answer. But how do we get there? What are we supposed to be doing here? Okay. How do you get rid of a negative exponent? You take it to the denominator. So this is going to be 1 over 2 to the third. What is 1 over 2 to the third? 1 eighth. Okay. Now, your calculator said 0.125, right? That's equivalent. That would be an equivalent answer. But I want us to know what we're doing here. Now, D and E, your calculator would not give you an exact answer. Because your calculator is going to give you a big, messy decimal. And that's not what I want. Okay. So, F of 1 half means I'm doing what? 2 to the 1 half. I don't want to leave it as 2 to the 1 half, though. I need brain power here. What do you remember about the power of 1 half? Oh, it's. Isn't it like the square root of 2 and then the exponent's 1? Yeah. Anytime you have a fraction, the exponent's some type of root. Okay? So right here, I know I'm going to have a root, and I'll do a little of explanation. My big 2 is my 2 underneath, right? one half. Well, this two in the denominator says that it's a root of two. This one on top says it's a power of one. Does that sound familiar? Yes. Now, fancy form, I just said the second root of two to the first. Really, what is this just? It's the square root of two. I'm really trying to prep you for the next one, which is why I took you through. Where's the one go? Where's the two go? Because here's one that I definitely, here's another one. I don't want the calculator answer. Because the calculator answer is going to give me a big, long, messy decimal. And I don't want that. So, 2 to the negative 3 halves. I got you started there. Okay, save that thought for just a moment. He's talking about the square root of 2 to the power of 3. Okay, 
So deal with the negative piece first. The negative piece takes whatever it is to the denominator, right? So, and some of you can jump and put this all in one step. I'm going to take two steps. So I'm going to say this is 1 over 2 to the 3 halves, right? Negative exponent takes it to the denominator. Now, because it's a fraction exponent, I need a root. So the 2 says it's a square root. The 3 says it's the power of 3. And that power of 3 can go in or outside the radical. I tend to put it in, but there's times I think about it out. Okay, keep going here. What do we have? 1 over... 1 over the square root of 8. So your calculator is not going to give this form, is it? Um, can you go farther? 1 through 2. No. Sorry. It's my bad. It's going to have to be a little bit. 1 over 2. 2 over 2. Are you guys with me on 2 square root of 2? Because what do we know about square root of 8? It's square root of 4 times square root of 2, right? Sound familiar? And I've got to throw in all these little review things because they're there in your brains. It's just how deep are they buried. Now, depends on the situation, okay? You're at pre-cal. They sometimes let you leave an answer like that. Now, I say sometimes. What's wrong I'll put that in quotes. What's wrong with this answer? <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Well, it's not that we have to split it up, but what's in the denominator that's not allowed to be in the denominator sometimes? A square root. A square root, right? So I'm not against, I have this as a, an answer circle on my paper. So I'm obviously not against this answer, but. If you had to rationalize, how do I rationalize and get rid of that square root of 2 in the denominator? You multiply by, what do we need gone? The square root of 2. If you multiply the denominator by square root of 2, you multiply the numerator by square root of 2. So now, this is going to be the alternate answer. On top, 1 times the square root of 2 is square root of 2. Easy enough. In the denominator. Okay, well what is square root of 2 times square root of 2? Square root of 4, which is 2, right? Times, what else do we have? Another 2. 2 times 2 is 4. can go either way here, guys. Okay. Now, as I said, D and E, your calculator is not going to give you those exact answers. On something like C, if my answer key says 1 8 and you put 0.125, those are equivalent. That's still exact. But here you would get long, unending decimals. So that square root makes them irrational. Okay, questions there? Okay. So, change it up again. We have a chart, kind of a double chart, and we have a graph. And our job is to write the exponential function that represents each piece. Okay? Exponential function. Now, and I don't know if you realize what's going on in this chart. In this chart, there's one set of x values that go for both the f of x values and the g of x values. And then we have a graph. So we're essentially, we have three things going on here. So now, if we think about f of x... We are writing a graph of or an equation of the form a times b to the x, yes? That is our, they ask us for an exponential function. So my form is a times b to the x. In order to write this, I need to know a, I need to know my initial value, and I need to know b, I need to know my base. Okay? Initial value and base. Any guesses here? Would 
your A value to the letters B four. Why? And then um, because anything raised to the power of four is one, so it'd be four times. Okay, except it wouldn't, okay, I see what you're saying. It just, it wouldn't necessarily be four you'd be raising to the power, but yeah, you'd be raising something to the zero power, okay? And that's your initial value in a basic exponential is going to be where the zero is. So right there, yes, I do know that A is four. That really kind of got sloppy there. Now, B. Okay, B is what are we raising to some power? Look for a relationship here, folks. How do you get from four ninths to four thirds? How do you get from four thirds to four? How do you get from four to twelve? How do you get from twelve to thirty six? What'd you say? Multiply by three. And I'm going to start with my whole numbers and work my way backwards here. Does that work? 12 times 3 is 36. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 thirds times 3. No. 4 thirds times 3. Does that work? Yeah, because the 3s will cancel, and that will give me 4. What about 4 ninths times 3? Does that by chance give me 4 thirds? It does. Because for me, I cross cancel. That's a 3, that's a 3, or that's a 1, that's a 3. In order to move down that column, it's multiplying by 3 every time to get to the next y value, isn't it? So guess what b is? B is three. three. Okay, in order to find your base, you're looking at what number is it that we are multiplying by over and over and over. Okay, so what's the function I'm going to write here? Okay, f of x is 4 times 3 to the x. Initial value is 4 because that's where my A is, or that's where 0 is. And then my base is that multiplying over and over and over. Okay. Ready to try G of X? G of X. Again, I'm looking for the same format. A times B to the X. I need to know A and B. Realize here's G of X. What X values are we paired with? The same original X values, okay? So, thoughts? A is 8. Everyone got the obvious? A is 8? A is 8 because that's when X is 0. I don't know. What do you guys think? Is it going from bottom to top or top to bottom? Well, technically, we need to go from smaller x values to larger x values. Okay. So we do need to go to top to bottom. And if we look at this as it is, I don't know that I would have said anything about one-fourth right at the top. I don't know that Katie said anything about one-fourth right off the top in her head. But how do you get from 32 to 8? What comes to obvious mind? Four. Divide by 4, yes? Are you with me? Because my brain goes right there with you. And I can't say that Katie's did, but my brain did. I'm going to say 32 divided by 8 is 4. Does that continue to work? Yes. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Guess what 2 divided by 4 is? Four. Take 2, you divide into 4 pieces. Okay, and 128 divided by 32. Or divide by 4 is 32. Now, here's the deal. Is 4 my B value? No, because I needed to know what number you are multiplying by. So dividing by 4 is the same as multiplying by what? 
multiplying by one fourth. Are you with us? So if we had said dividing by three, we'd now see multiplying by one third, so on and so forth, right? So right there is your V value. You're always looking for what is it multiplying by. So G of X equals A, which is eight, times B, which is one fourth to the power of X. If you want to get nitpicky, yes, you should have the parentheses around the one fourth. Okay. And that has to do with because otherwise it just looks like the X goes on just the numerator. And it doesn't. It goes on the whole thing. Now, you guys are all turning the page, but you're overlooking. We have a graph here to look at. I'm sorry. I'm watching the half of you have turned the page and moved on. I'm not ready to move on quite yet. I want to look at B. Now, what's the difference between A and B? Chart? Graph. Are we still writing the same thing? We are. And I'm going to call this one H of X just to be different. But am I still going for the same form? I am. They just weren't nice enough to give me a chart, were they? Could we make a chart? Yeah. Yeah, we can make a chart. I can make my own little chart right here. If I try and make my chart like the other one, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. <coughs> okay. What's the ordered pair at negative 2? Okay. Let's go with what ordered pairs can you tell me? 0, 3. Okay. He's on it. He says, you guys with him? 0, 3. Yes? That's an important one. Can you tell me anything else? Yeah, you can. 1, 5. Is it? No, just kidding. I wouldn't say 1, 5. 1, 6. I would say 1, 6. Can you tell me one more? And technically, I'll tell you what. Right now, you have enough information to complete this problem. Okay? But if we want verification, there's one more dot that I could get from here. Which looks like 212. Yeah. Now, do we have to know where negative 2 and negative 1 are to figure this out? No. Okay. But do we have all the information we need? Yes. What's A? 3. Okay, right there. When x is 0, there's your a value. So a is 3. What's b? 2. How do you get from 3 to 6 and 6 to 12? Two. You multiply by 2. So when given graphs in homework, you can pull the values and use them, right? So h of x equals 3 times 2 to the x. You do realize this is not 6 to the x, correct? Yes. Okay. It is definitely not 6 to the x because that 2 is not just a 2. So you cannot multiply those. Okay. Move along. Okay. As I said on the back side, as long as we have example 4, we're good. Okay. So as long as we have example 4 done, example 5 is very much like it. But we're going to look at some graphs here. Now, you just saw one on the previous page. What's an exponential graph look like? Like this. Um, go back in your brains to lesson 1.3. Okay, one of those 12 graphs was the exponential graph, right? The basic equation for it was y equals e to the x, but that e could be any number. And so in this case, we're going to talk about 2 to the x. So let's graph this. If I'm going to graph this, what do I need? I need some xy values, right? If you don't know the specifics of exactly what a graph looks like, we think xy chart to get us started. I'm going to use my normals, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Because you do need some negatives and some positives, and zero is always our friend. 
Okay, what do you know? Katie starting in the middle. Although that's the easy one, isn't it? And just plug it in, folks. What is 2 to the 0? Anything raised to 0 is 1. If you keep going down, what's 2 to the first? 2. What's 2 to the second? 4. Okay, we got to back up here. What's 2 to the negative first? Sorry. I'm all over the place. 2 to the negative first is take that negative exponent to the denominator, third time today, right? And so that's 1 over 2, so 1 half. So what about 2 to the negative second? A fourth, because it's 1 over 2 squared, which is a fourth. Okay. Let's get a basic, sketch a basic graph here. Okay, negative 2, 1 fourth, left 2, barely up. Negative 1, a half, left 1, a half up. 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4. Can you visualize what that curve looks like? And here's the deal. Would your calculator tell you this too? It would. Okay, so remember exponential curves, if you go back to lesson one three, it's that curve that on the left it's running along the x-axis, right? That x-axis is an asymptote, it's running along the x-axis, traditional one cuts through at zero one and then it goes up exponentially. Okay, that's our base graph to work off of. Anytime you see some number raised to the power of x, that's your basic starting graph whether it's e to the x, 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 4 to the x. That's your basic starting graph. Now, A, B, C. Describe the transformation used on each of the following functions, sketching their graphs. So somewhere back in Chapter 1 or Chapter 2, a couple different places, we reviewed transformations. Okay. Taught them in Algebra 2. We reviewed them. We've reviewed them this year. g of x equals 2 to the x minus 1. So without doing an xy chart, where's this graph going to go? Okay, so our original graph here was 2 to the x, yes? What's different about 2 to the x here? Minus 1. What's the minus 1 on the x do to it? Translates it where? Not down. It's not reflecting. It's subtracting 1 from the x. Right one. Right one. Oh, I was getting there. You got all of them but one. <laughs> okay, so okay, if a number is added or subtracted at the end, right? So if it's to the x and then there's a number added or subtracted at the end, that's going to take the graph up or down. If the number is with the x, adders, does this sound familiar? Add or subtracted from the x, it's going to take the graph. Left or right? And I always say left or right, opposite the sign. Okay? So that means that this minus 1 here is going to translate the graph right one unit. I really wish right now I remembered what lesson those were all in, but I don't. Now, if you take this graph, you translate it right one. 
What's that mean to each of those points we graphed up above? They each go over one. Is it going to be a whole lot different? No. Not going to be a whole lot different at all. So if I take this and I translate it right one, instead of being at negative two one fourth, where is that going to be? Negative one one fourth, right? I'm just moving that point over right one. Instead of being at negative one one half, now I'm going to be zero one half. Instead of being at zero one, where am I at? One one. Instead of being at one two. Two two. Instead of being at two four. Three four. Now my graph looks essentially the same, doesn't it? It just is scooted over one right. Now, what I know that last section of homework is basically they give you some equations, they give you some graphs, and that 25 to 30 is matching. And the idea is not to try and plug them all into your calculator, but to be able to say, okay, 2 to the x minus 1. That's going to be the basic graph just slightly scooted over. Okay? Now, can you graph them as the backup plan? Sure. Graph them as the backup plan. Okay, let's look at B real quick. What are your thoughts on B? What's a negative do? Left. Oh, but this isn't adding or subtracting one. This is a negative on the x, which is a reflection. Reflection across. If the negative is on the x, think opposite variable. So it's a reflection across the y-axis. Now, can you visualize? Reflection across the y-axis. What's it going to do? A normal graph does, starts low over here and goes up. Reflection across the y-axis? It's going to start up and go low, right? Because reflection across the y-axis, I'm taking this graph here and flipping it left and right, aren't I? Are you with me? So what we're looking at here, instead of going left two up a fourth, you're going to be going <coughs> right two up a fourth. Instead of left one up a half, right one up a half. It's still going to go through zero one. My right one up two is now left one up two. And my right two up four is now left two up four. Are you with me? Yes? No? Yes. Okay. Didn't we just do C on page? We might have. Well, we didn't grab it. It's already. Okay. Oh, it is on the Well, okay. I want to know what's the transformation here? So here's our 2 to the x. What are we looking at here? A 3. What's that 3 do? When a function is multiplied by a constant. Vertical stretch by a factor of 3. This is a little rough, but is it coming back to us? Okay, now, when we do this, okay, how do we stretch three? Vertical stretch three is taking what? Each of these and multiplying by three, yes? Probably, I probably shouldn't have written it in because it's not really on those values, is it? But that means left two. Up a fourth is now left two up three fourths. So still low. Left one up a half is now left one up three halves, one and a half. 
Zero one is now zero three. One two is now one six. Here's the good one. Two four is now what? Two twelve. Okay, you get the idea, right? Yes. So what I want you to be able to do in homework, ooh, gosh, I, wow. Oh, I, I got my dots way off. Okay, that's a horrible looking graph. My apologies. Okay, what I want you to be able to do in homework, though, is you're not graphing these, I don't think, unless I'm forgetting a section. It's more a matter of, here's an equation, here's graphs, match them up. Try and do it without punching into the calculator. Now, the bottom of this, folks, it's just doing this with E. Is this the same type of stuff? It is, which is why I don't have to teach this and we're still okay. Okay, your basic exponential function uses E instead. Okay, um, we are going to talk about exponential growth and decay coming up. And so I don't think you have to address any of that in homework, but the idea, whoops that right here, this is a growth model. And right here, this is a decay model. You might know that from your science classes. Okay. So um, look at the homework. Do the homework. I'm calling it due tomorrow. Okay. Page 255, 1 through 14, 25 through 30. If you weren't in here. On Schoology, I have a PDF of the pre-calc book that I think should work. Give it a try. Let me know if it doesn't. Or let me know if it doesn't. Okay? 